Hello and welcome to the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Tire Art Livestream event. This is my fifth year working with Goodyear in the Cotton Bowl, creating life-size mascots out of Goodyear tires. This year we're going to have a really cool matchup. We have the Alabama Crimson Tide, which is Big Al the Elephant right here, versus the Cincinnati Bearcats. Not only is it going to be a good matchup on the field, but also off the field, and that's why I'm here to make these mascots from start to finish using Goodyear tires. A little bit more information about me, my name is Blake McFarland. I am a retired professional baseball player turned full-time artist. Things that I love doing is taking ordinary, everyday things that you see and transforming them into unique pieces of art. And, and in this case, we're taking Goodyear tires and transforming them into both competing team's mascots. A little bit about what we're gonna do today. Uh, we're going to be going over the building process, so you're going to see how both these things are made from start to finish. We're also going to be having a fun Cotton Bowl trivia, so if you are up to date on your college football and you know a lot about the Cotton Bowl, you're going to do really well in this event. And last but not least, Goodyear is going to be giving away two pairs of tickets and $1,000 to two lucky fans. All you have to do to enter this is leave a comment. That's literally it. You leave a comment and you are entered to win. The more comments you leave, the better are your chances at winning. So that's pretty cool. And to get this thing started, where are you guys from and who do you think is going to win this game? Are you guys going with Alabama or the Bearcat? Maybe you choose on what mascot you like better, I don't know, if the, neither of those are your team. Uh, but again, you have to comment to win uh, either of these prizes. Now I'm going to go over kind of the building process, how these things are created in such a short period of time. And when we talk about short period of time, that is an understatement because these things happen in 17 days. From start to finish, there's only 17 days, and that's actually because the NCAA selection committee doesn't pick who's in the Cotton Bowl until December 5th this year. And the game is on the 31st, but I have to ship these out before Christmas. So I have 17 days to do that, and that's really the most challenging part of creating these sculptures. Now let's walk through a little bit of the process. The first thing to do is I blow up the mascot. So I will, I will do a sketch to life size scale and from there basically trace it out so I have a template. And then I actually use pink insulation foam. And I don't know if you can see this, but this is your standard pink insulation foam. And I use this foam because not only is it really easy to cut through, you can use hot knives, which me and my, my partner working on these, we use hot knives, which actually cuts through this really, really easily. Um, you could also use other tools, but long story short, this stuff is super easy to work with and kind of fun. You get a big block of foam into a sculpture in only a couple days. And I guess I'll ask the question, how long do you guys think it took to create these? Right now, right now they are, they're fiberglass, they're all foam interior and yeah, they're, they're almost, the bases are basically there. So how long do you think that took? And we'll, we'll tell you in a little bit. Once the foam is carved, we actually have to go to welding. I have my little welding set up over there and we weld in the armature. So in all of these sculptures, there's actually steel cut through the legs and the arms. There's steel everywhere because these things have to be super strong and durable, just like the Goodyear tires that we're going to put on here. And we're going to put on hundreds and hundreds of Goodyear tires. So these things have to be super durable and strong. To get even more strength, we actually have to fiberglass them. And I actually just got these back to fiberglassing today. So if you can see here, these are just painted black right over the fiberglass. And these things are super strong and heavy duty. So they are gonna be able to hold up as many Goodyear tires as we throw at it. So basically this is where we're at today. This is, let's see if anyone guessed it. We are three days in. So in three days, we carved out the bear cat and big owl the elephant, three days in. So that's where we're at today. But now the next step is actually applying the Goodyear tires. So uh, basically I will map out the design, uh, what both mascots have, their features. I know the bear cat has really iconic whiskers and eyes and, and bushy eyebrows, which is gonna look really, really good. And then Obviously, Big Al, he's got the, the big A here, and that's all going to be detailed out of tires, and that's what we're going to go with today. Now, how I attach the tires is actually with a, let me grab it, 
uh, narrow crown staples. So I will be shooting thousands and thousands of these narrow crown staples into this fiberglass. And that's another reason why I fiberglass this because these staples hold really well into fiberglass. Uh, outside of that, it's all the little details. And what makes these extremely difficult and time consuming is there are a ton of details. We're not skimping on any details here. So for Cincinnati, we actually have the Cincinnati logos or the Bearcat logos, as well as patches on the shoulders that are all gonna be using Goodyear tires, which is uh, a very difficult, but a fun challenge in the time frame. And then obviously big out here, he's got the big A, and then we're gonna detail, obviously the trunk's gonna be a lot of work. And um, again, all Goodyear tires. Outside of that, it's just detailing, putting all the staples in, in the tires, and then the last tedious thing to do is I'm gonna be using I'm gonna guess 10,000 staples per sculpture. Each one of those little staples actually has to be hidden. So I will paint every single staple so you can't see because outside in some light, you'll actually see like a little glimpse of the staple. So I will paint every single staple so you can't see them. So it's, it's a long process, hard to do in this time frame, but that's what I love about doing these sculptures for the Goodyear Cotton Bowl. Um, and now I'm basically going to start building and I'm going to kind of show you certain things that I do. So to start out, um, what we don't have here for, for uh, the Bearcat is teeth. He has these iconic, like one big tooth right here and then he has obviously the top ones there. So what I have here is just some half inch plywood and I have just the teeth kind of mapped out and then I'm gonna cut this on the bandsaw. And if you guys have any questions at all during this, let me know. If you have any questions during the build, what I'm doing, let me know and I'll do my best to answer every single question or as many as I can in the time frame we have. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. I'm gonna cut out the Bearcat's teeth and this is basically just the strength that's gonna hold the tires on top of this. So this is actually not really the full teeth Tires will be over this, and let's get to cutting. Good. Loud noise coming.
going to show you really quick. Uh, we have the teeth kind of roughed out. I still need to take them over to the, the belt sander and clean them up, but I'll show you these on there. But in the meantime, we have a question. How heavy are the sculptures once complete? Uh, these will be estimated probably around 250 pounds. The elephant's obviously going to be more because he's just so much more bulky, but I would estimate 250 pounds for Cincinnati and probably 300 pounds for Alabama. And that's, yeah, I'd say right around there. Um, so with the teeth here, they're just kind of roughed out. I will have to take them over to there, but just to kind of show you how they're going to get in there. See if you guys can even see that. Can you see that? Does that look like him a little more? That'll be his teeth, and then it's going to be covered with white Goodyear tires, and that'll really make them pop. But again, a little bit more work to do on these. Um, and while I pull off on that, I'm going to start actually uh, putting the jersey on the elephant here. So here I have painted tires. I used exterior grade paint, and I painted them out in the in the studio outside, and I'm going to attach them to the elephant. Uh, but actually, that reminds me, before I do that, I need to kind of map out where I want to put things. So the best way to do that is just with chalk. So for the elephant here, we have his jersey, basically. This will be the jersey lines. Just big A template, just kind of mapping out the basics of, of where things are going. We have eyes. Somewhere around there. And then for the elephant trunk, we're going to obviously we're going to go horizontal tires to really get this guy looking like an elephant. All right, we have another question. How many years have you been making tire art? This is, so I retired from uh, the Toronto Blue Jays organization. I had a shoulder injury, which took me out in 2018. So I've been full time since 2018, but my first tire sculpture was actually 2012. So I've been doing them since 2012, but not full time until 2018. So kind of learned a lot more tricks in uh, tips along the way with working with tires. Okay. He's got these big bushy eyebrows. They're the very red bushy eyebrows, which I think are gonna look really good when they're when the tires are applied. Any other questions? Keep them coming. What other questions do you have about making this? Uh, any other questions on the kind of the process on anything really? Just ask away.
All right, we've got another question. Which part of the process takes the longest? Uh, this is an easy one, the tires. Cutting the tires takes a really, really long time and then actually putting them on, which you'll see me do here in a second, it just takes a long, long time. I have to put hundreds of staples in, uh, in each tire to make sure they're really strongly attached to these sculptures. So the tires uh, will take roughly five days per sculpture, but if we talk about what a normal time frame sculpture for me would be like, one life-size sculpture like this would normally take me an entire month to build. So if that gives you any idea of the stress that we're doing right now, both of these are going to be done within 17 days. Um, with that being said, I've hired a really good crew. They helped me out and this would not be possible without a bunch of people that are great at what they do and that are going to help me finish these on time. So now that everything's kind of mapped out a little bit, I'm going to start applying the tires so you can actually see how these tires are applied and uh, put on the sculptures. Let's see. So I'm going to start on Big Al's jersey. I have my pre-painted, pre-cut Goodyear tire right here, and we are going to just start kind of mapping out his jersey. And it's a lot of trial and error. I'll have to kind of find his neckline and then cut the tire to where it goes. So this one. Looking right there. Turn this pressure down. It's probably very loud. It's always hard getting the, uh, the right pressure for this because if it's too much, it'll go through the tire. And if it's not enough, it won't sink all the way in. So it's always tough getting the right pressure for this. tire on Let's see if we have any questions how did I how did I get into tire art uh, kind of a long story but I'll do it short uh, I used to live next to a playground that had a dragon made out of old uh, recycled tractor tires I think they were tractor tires they were huge anyways from there I was on I was playing in the minor leagues I was on a minor league budget I was still doing art in my off season and I started my career kind of painting and doing kind of scenery, but I quickly learned that I wasn't a good enough painter to make that a full-time gig. So I knew I needed to go kind of outside the box. And once I saw those tires at that playground, I just knew that, hey, these tires are just everywhere. Like, can I try something? Let's just see if I can get the, let's just see if I can make something out of these tires. So uh, I spent a whole month experimenting with tires, trying to figure out how to work with them. Um, and then I had no idea about how to get this into the art world. I knew nothing about 
art galleries and all that. So what I actually did was I, I made little flyers of my first tire sculpture and I put it under art gallery doors. So I had no idea what to do. So I did that and about two months later a gallery actually called me and they wanted to display my art. So I did that and from there it just kind of kept going and I kept making more, getting better at it, refining and just kept, kept getting better as I kept getting more practice. So it was fun. All right, now that I kind of have this thing down, I'm gonna start on the Bearcat and kind of do the same thing with the Bearcat. So you guys can kind of see both of them working at the same time. In the meantime, we have another question. How many tires do you think we will use? Um, right now, I'm kind of estimating, just based on these sizes, probably around 180 tires for the Elephant. Just again, it's bigger. It's, we got this big head and big ears. Probably around 120 to 130 for the Bearcat. Um, so yeah, in total, you know, somewhere plus or minus a couple of 300, 300 total probably. Um, I'm going to start on the Bearcats jersey now. Normally I'd be wearing earplugs because this is very, very loud, especially going into fiberglass. It basically echoes and makes it even louder. So normally I'd have some ear protection. But for you guys, no. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now you might be wondering, like what about the logos? What about the big A for the elephant? Everything is layered. So this is my base layer of tires. And from here, I will layer everything on top of that, uh, which will just give it a little more dimension. And it'll look better, obviously, with shadow, natural light and shadows. You're gonna see it really pop out more. And we have another question. Did Goodyear find you, or did you reach out to them to start this? Um, this was my very first year, it was 2017, and Goodyear actually reached out to me. They saw some of my previous tire sculptures, and they, they asked the crazy question, hey, can you make these, can you make two of them in 15 days? And I, uh, I said yes, not knowing how hard it would be and how demanding it was, and um, it's been a tradition that I've loved to make for the past five years, and it's been just so much fun and such a good partnership between myself, Goodyear, and the Cotton Bowl. And it's uh, just something that I look forward to every single year. It's not only a crazy time frame, but it's just, it's fun. And I just really, really enjoy it. So uh, yeah, that's kind of how it all started. So from here, just to show you guys something a little different, um, I will do just kind of how I do one of these eyes. Let's see, this I'll show you here. So basically I just cut an eye template out of the full scale sketch. And then since it's wider than the tread that I'm using, I'm actually gonna cut two of them out. So there I have my shape basically. And then, this is for the elephant. The elephant actually has like light blue eyes. So, if I could find my painted tire. Oh, right below me. So everything basically involves templates when I do the detail stuff. So like this, I have the outside done. That's gonna be the black tire. I think it's black. I have to double check that, but this inside section is baby, basically the baby blue iris, I guess. And we're just gonna cut that out. And there I have basically my template for the blue portion of the eye. So I'll cut that. my blue portion and then I have the pupil so I'm just going to cut that out and I always like to get the little details like when a little piece of light is shimmering off the eye so I'm going to cut out a little light spot in there that's going to be black. Let's get a natural tire here.
And again, same thing, just using my template. I'm gonna cut out the pupil. And we have another question, which Goodyear combo statue has been your favorite? Um, there's been a lot, uh, really ones that I really enjoy. Um, we've done the Penn State Nittany Lions, Memphis Tigers, I think those might be my favorite because just the matchup was awesome. We had the full scale Tiger versus the Mountain Lion and just both of them together matched up uh, really, really well and I just, I really enjoyed those. So. I'm gonna say two of them. I'm gonna say Penn State and University of Memphis. Those are probably my favorite. Um, another one that I really like is actually USC, Tommy Trojan. I love doing muscle structure and especially human muscle structure. So Tommy Trojan was all muscled out. And the cool thing about these Goodyear tires is I have so many different treads to choose from. Every single tread and different kind of orientation of the tread can be a different muscle group. So a lot of my sculptures um, that have human forms are all very, very muscular and I try to get the muscle structure as anatomically correct as possible. So those are probably my favorite. So we'll go with those. <laughs> um, gonna finish up this eye here. Okay, so we have the pupil, the iris, and now we just need the white. So let me go grab a painted white tire. All right, we got the white tire. If you guys have any more questions about this build or uh, anything about how it's done, um, Shoot away, I'd love to know. Didn't cut that one long enough. Let's see if you guys can see this. You might not be able to. Try and hold it up. Okay, so this is basically just layers of different color tires. If I can hold it down right, I have to use two tires for the uh, larger portion to get the width, but that's basically the eye right there. I realize I need some touch-ups and that's what I do at the end that actually takes a really long time. Any little touch-up will get painted on at the very end. And you'll kind of see this. So I'll need to make this a little bit bigger, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys how this is done. So that is basically it right there. But again, it's gotta be bigger than this. This was just to kind of show you guys how it's done. Um, my next one's going to be full scale size and I'm not going to put it on now. This will be once the whole elephant is actually lined with the gray tires. This will be on top of that again, just trying to stack the layers of each tire. So that is that. All right. 
and um, we can put more tires on or oh we can make cloths oh. let's see So for, for the Bearcat, he actually has, there's a couple of little details that I actually leave off and that is the claws because those I don't want to carve out of foam, they're too fragile. So what I'll do very similar to the teeth that I made, I'm going to cut these out of wood and then I'll actually inlay them where they go here. So you're going to see every little detail you see on the real mascot, you're going to see on these sculptures and that's what I try to do with all of them and these are no exceptions. So some parts I just leave off to do afterwards. Another big feature is uh, Big Al here actually has a tail that swoops down. So you're going to see a tail coming out here that I did leave off as well. Again, that's just easier to do out of wood. So I'm going to kind of sculpt the tail out of wood and then shred up tires to really get that little poof of the end of an elephant tail. It's like that little fur ball at the end and that'll look really good in tires. Uh, coming out behind Big Al here. Now, uh, I just wanna thank you guys for tuning in. I mean, this has been super fun for me. I hope you guys uh, got to see a little bit of insight on how we make these sculptures uh, from start to finish, all out of Goodyear tires. And you're gonna see these uh, at the Cotton Bowl this year, and you're gonna see the final reveal on December 29th. And one thing to reminder is the ticket reminder, or the giveaway reminder. So. If you can just check your DMs and private messages because uh, it may take a couple days for you guys to receive those for the winners um, and Goodyear will be reaching out to you guys. Uh, be sure to check out or keep an eye on uh, Goodyear's socials for all the upcoming releases. Um, again, these will be revealed on the 29th and then be sure to tune into the Goodyear Combo Classic on December 31st at 3.30 Eastern Standard Time and it's going to be a really fun game to watch. You'll be able to see these guys at the game, and I can't wait. So thank you guys again. Thank you, Goodyear. Thank you, the Combo. And that's it. Bye, guys.